So uh, thanks very much for joining us, Alan. I suppose just to start off with, we're, we're at a beef price now of about 340 cent a kilo, which is well below the cost of production. But in comparison, I suppose the live market is performing quite well, probably driven a little bit by live export demand from live shippers uh, and the grass demand from buyers. I suppose, is there anything that farmers can do inside the farm gate, maybe move cattle away from slaughter and maybe go to the live market with them? Or what's the advice here? Okay, Niall, thanks uh, for having me on. I suppose, yeah, it, it's, it's an ill wind that blows no good for some, but it, it, I suppose the, despite the fact that beef prices are down at 340 kilo, which you said, right, that's well below cost of production. We do have this outlet of a relatively strong live trade still. We're still seeing, you know, the good quality cattle, you know, the, the, the good suckler, or new grade and Charlie's limousines, etc. are still commanding prices of in the round, you know, two euros to two thirty a kilo, fairly freely on the open market. And as you said, that's the driven by you know the grass buyers and and some uh, to a certain extent by the the live shippers. Um, really, you're dealing with, with with a split scenario here, okay? If you have cattle that have been built up on meal for the last you know six weeks or thereabouts, and you're hitting into you know six, seven, eight kilos a day. Uh, of finishing ration going into them you really are probably on the home straight at this stage in terms of getting those cattle fit for slaughter you know if, if you're only going to be you know four to six weeks away from slaughter at this stage in the shed um in reality we'd be saying look keep going uh with, with those stock is it's going to be quite hard to wind those stock back down off meal um and then by the time they re- readjust their diet go back to grass again and start regaining weight you're going to be well into the summer it, it that's the stage we're at really where we're saying you know keep going. It's unfortunate that you may have to take a fairly substantial loss when you kill those cattle, but you've kind of committed yourself at this stage in terms of uh, your inputs into the stock and, and, and how far along they are in terms of in terms of, uh, in terms of meal feeding. It's the same for bulls. If you're an under, under 16 month bull system, look, you're as well off keep going. You really only have one outlet with them, and that is to try and finish them under the age. At least, if you can finish them on the grid, once they meet the weight specs and you're getting the 12 cell QA quality assurance, Look, it, 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 it drives the, the, um, the price per kilo up substantially from the 340 when you add in the grid and the bonuses, etc. Um, the, the other option then is, right, most people, I suppose, will have cattle out at this stage, but if there are some that are still sitting on the fence and wondering what do they do, do they put cattle back out to grass maybe and maybe try and finish them off grass later in the summer? If you are under that maybe five to six kilos a meal or you haven't really pushed them that far yet uh, in the shed, um, I would say, look, you're safe enough to pull them back put them to grass, once you can handle two things, the first is the lack of cash flow from the fact that you haven't killed those cattle, you would not have been expecting that money in the system probably within the next six to eight weeks, uh, and also that you can handle the grass demand, that you know, putting out an extra 10 or 20 or 30 cattle to grass isn't going to uh, restrict the amount of silage you can make and isn't going to uh, restrict the amount of, of, of grass you have available for all the other categories of stock on the farm. So you, you kind of have to make your own judgment call. Probably the big one is the cash flow. If you're expecting 20, 30 grand in by sometime in May or June and it's not going to come now until July or August, well, then you need to maybe start looking at, right, do I need to get money in from somewhere else? Do I need to sell off other types of stock, maybe Weanlands, or else do I need to talk to banks about increasing overdrafts or stock and loans, et cetera, just to tide you over for that period. The, the main benefit, I suppose, of putting them out to grass is it, it, might gives, it might give the market some bit of a chance to, to settle. I suppose we've seen today that um, Supermax is starting to reopen its branches for drive through now from during the week. Uh, Burger King are starting to open some outlets maybe in the UK, I think, uh, in the next while. And look, maybe if the likes of McDonald's started to come on stream uh, in, the new, in the near future, even as a drive through facility, that would create a big demand back on the market again. And maybe it would give that, that price a chance to rise a bit back up into, into more, I suppose, settled territory. And also you have the added advantage that the cost of production from now until September is extremely low compared to what we've gone through in the last four or five months. You've coming into you've coming out of a situation where cattle are costing probably three euros a day inside in the shed versus going out to grass. You know, it, it's it's probably a fifth to sixth of the cost. You know, in terms of just grass demand only. Okay, and I suppose we're kind of back in a similar position. I remember talking to yourself at the ploughing last year. Maybe farmers will have to hold back on those non-essential investments inside the farm gate, Alan. Yeah, unfortunately, when we when we gave that advice a year ago, nearly or, or nine nine ten months ago, we did expect it was only going to maybe a short term scenario, um, and that you know you, you would be back in a scenario around now where things would be improving and you can look to maybe invest again within the farm gate. But that looks to not be the scenario again. Look, we're we're going back to this. You know, you're avoiding your heavy investment in you know machinery and your maybe jeeps or sheds or roadways or drainage, whatever it is that was going. You know those. 
the big ticket items, I suppose, the, the items that could cost you between 20 and 40,000, you're, you're really parking them in the vast majority of cases to one side, unless they're absolutely essential. Uh, and make and do with what you have. Look, there are certain areas we would say continue to invest in, you know, look, animal health, the vaccination programs, et cetera, look, they're all essential. Cutting your costs on them now could have a, a bigger effect in terms of increasing your costs down the line through vet bills. We would say lime, look, there's an instant return off lime. If your land leaves lime, getting that two ton an acre out on a, on, on a few fields, whatever you're doing, go ahead with it anyway. It, it, there's an instant payback there. Um, maybe increasing P and K levels, reseeding, you know, maybe we wouldn't be saying pull it back completely, but maybe cut it back a small bit, maybe to what you can do within cash flow, you know. Um, it, it, it's really cutting your, cutting your cloth to suit your own situation, but um, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be pulling back on those big, big investments for now until we get to see, a, you know, are we going to get some kind of an EU fund to try and pop the price up or is the price going to increase itself naturally? What, what way are things going to pan out over the next few months? You really, you need to buy your time before you start making these big calls. Okay, Alan, I suppose just in terms of the, the Chagas Green Acres Calf to Beef programme, it's been a busy time for the, for the farmers involved in that. So let's give us an update maybe on, on calves, on calf, the types of calves that were bought, maybe a purchase price. Yeah, um, Yeah, I mean, the types of calves that were bought are probably relatively similar to last year. Uh, a large number of freezers have been bought on farm now this year again. And really what we're seeing is in terms of when we are comparing uh, the, the, the kill price of these freezers compared to maybe other breeches such as Angus and Herefords, we're not seeing a huge difference in terms of the money, the returns coming back on farm, whereas they are being bought for substantially lower prices than the Angus and Herefords. Uh, that being said, the calf prices didn't fall as much as they needed them to. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, you were talking around 100 euros for a, um, a Frisian, you know, or when, when, when beef price is pushing over four euros a kilo. That calf is still costing probably 50 euros for anything, you know, a relatively decent quality calf um, this year. I, which really isn't back a hell of a lot compared to the drop in beef price we've seen. We've seen beef prices drop 60, 70 cents probably uh, now versus where they were this time two years ago. So there's a substantial drop in, in, in what's coming back in for the finished cattle, but the calves have only dropped by a smaller amount. Uh, that said, the Herefords and the Anguses have started to come back a lot more. Um, they didn't really drop last year. Uh, they did drop now in, on, in most cases this year. They're back probably 60, 70, 80 euros ahead in a lot of cases back to something a bit more realistic in terms of what they're worth. Um, and the Continentals, we, there wasn't a huge amount of Continentals bought on farm. There was only one farmer there, Richie Long, um, has a lot of Continentals in. The reason there is, he's do, as we know, he's doing a deal with his brothers where he's actually picking out the sires that have been used on their cows and, and, and they're being bought in onto his farm there. But that's maybe a bit of a unique situation. But um, the numbers of cows that have been bought on the farms have, have increased. So farmers still have a, a reasonable degree of confidence in, 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 in the system they're running. Um, and probably, I'd say, sticking with the steers in the vast majority of cases. Um, the bulls are a bit of a problem getting them killed at the minute on some of the farms. And there's a couple of the farms that would have been dabbing their toes in the bulls that are probably going to move back towards steers um, due to hopefully get a bit more of a, safe, a safer outlet for their stock when they want to kill them. Uh, we will have, I suppose, a more comprehensive um, um, outline of, of how it's paid for calves, the type of calves to come in, that's all going to come out in the next uh, month or two when lads are finished buying the calves and we'll report on every land of that. Okay, so I suppose, Alan, the next big challenge on these farms is grass. Um, what's the advice, I suppose, managing grass this type of year? I suppose they have to get good quality grass in front of the cattle, but also harvest good quality silage. Yeah. Um, I suppose if we're, we're just starting up a new um, piece with you in Agriland, obviously on, on grass production, that's going to be a, um, a weekly feature from now on to show how our farmers are performing. And if we just look at this week's figures, there's a huge variation in terms of grass growth rates on farms. If you take the farmers who have had maybe older swords and who maybe aren't, are still working through their first rotation, where they may have housed early, they're dealing with probably a big dead butt of grass on some farms. You're down in less than 20 kilos dry matter per hectare on those farms still despite early fertiliser going out, where if you take the farmers with the receded swords who are grazing earlier in the year, um, you're talking probably 60 to 70 kilos uh, dry matter per hectare per day there. So there's, probably, there's over three times the amount of grass been grown on, we'll say, some of the top producing farms versus some of the bottom ones at the minute. Um, but that, that'll, that'll improve with time. The, the other thing is that some who went out very early and are maybe in maybe the eastern side of the country where there's a lot less rain being, have been experienced, um, getting quite tight on grass there. Maybe the option there is going to be go back into some of the silage ground again 
and give a graze a few of the paddocks to give some of the, the other graze and paddocks a chance to recover. Um, you're 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 going out heavy enough with fertilizer. At this stage, you're going out with maybe thirty to forty units per acre, where you've uh, a high stocking rate of you know on the grazing platform around three to three and a half livestock units per hectare or higher. So you're you know you're we do need that bit of I suppose kindness or softness to come into the weather to really see the grass growth rates drive on and increase up to let's say 60, 70, 80 kilos across the board. But that generally naturally does come from around this point of the year on. So look, while farmers are tight at the minute in some scenarios, um, we are confident enough that they will come out of that problem fairly soon. And they'll, they, you know, it's not a bad time of the year to be tight on grass. You, it allows you to graze stores out a bit better and it, it can improve quality later in the year. Yeah, we'll leave it at that, Alan. Thanks very much. How has your day-to-day routine changed in light of current circumstances? I suppose, you know, it has changed substantially from a political perspective. Obviously, I would have been on the road traveling the country and indeed going to Brussels and that. Um, all that travel is over. It's teleconferences at the call of the day. And, you know, we're doing this by, by satellite, so to speak, this interview. So from that perspective, politically, it has changed radically. Um, you know, from a farming perspective, obviously, we have to keep social distance. That's absolutely critical. And, you know, the bull tank driver, Willie, has to understand that Pat won't be going for a chat with him. And Willie doesn't want Pat to come for a chat. Uh, the same way with the meal lorry and indeed the feed and fer- or the fertilizer lorry. So, you know, we talk to our neighbours. Yes, certainly you do. We talk to them from a distance. Talk to everybody that you meet, but from a distance. And I suppose that's the critical thing, that we keep our social distance. And I suppose, like, with family farms, kids being at home from school, should there be more of an emphasis on the safety now more than ever, on farm safety? Certainly there should, Sylvester. Um, You know, obviously children are off now at this time of the year, and it's the start of the ice season. There's still slurry being spread, you know, in some places for for a a later first quarter silage. A lot of activity, animals and and, and, light, and machinery around the air and, and kids around the air off school and out of creches, you know, and uh, all at home and extremely claustrophobic from being indoors. I suppose really what I would suggest is that farmers would <clears throat> allocate 15, 20 minutes in the day where they would stop their activities, uh, bring out these younger kids in particular um, and, and let them see the calves or the cows or, or whatever it is that's out in the air that they want to see. Uh, and do it in a safe environment. Um, equally, you know, I suppose people need to be careful that your young teenagers are sufficiently trained in how to operate machinery because, you know, we were all young and, and, and meant to drive tractors and that. And, you know, it's critical that they, they know how to do so and that the machines are safe and that the terrain they're driving is safe. Um, because, you know, in fairness, we've had very fine weather. Kids have been off school and off college and there's a lot of work being done at the moment on farms. So, that's, that's the one positive out of COVID-19. But from a safety perspective, uh, we need to keep our finger on the pulse. The silage season is just around the corner. The kids that were usually in school will be at home uh, and we need to take precautions, necessary precautions. It's not, up to the, it's not up to the contractor while they have a significant part to play both themselves and their drivers. The air should be a safe working environment for those machines when they come in. I suppose just between uh, falling commodity prices, current restrictions, the isolation, it's all, um, it's all kind of putting extra pressure on farmers. Is this having a negative impact on farmers' mental health, do you think? Well, look, I suppose farmers were, a lot of farmers were used, used to social isolation, um, and some of them, you know, it would have been highlighted in the past that it was extremely difficult with the closure of rural pubs and that. This is slightly different in that there's a request out there or demand that we all social distance. So I think for farm families, it's probably easier to social distance than for others. Uh, nonetheless, you know, we do need to keep in contact with our neighbours. We have mobile phones and, and our friends. Uh, we have mobile phones and there's various modern technologies to, other than mobile phones, Skype and everything else to do that. Equally, you know, we've seen markets under pressure and we saw the first of those price cuts you know, with a two cents a litre cut for March milk and ICMSA felt that was excessive. Uh, we could fully understand that the market was, was under pressure, but two cents for March milk, a uh, March that was very expensive for milk production uh, was a step too far. Obviously, there's going to be ch- further challenges on April price and May price. 
Uh, so, you know, come the autumn, there will be financial implications to where milk markets are, given that the Dutch quotations were at 33 cents a number of weeks ago, and now they find themselves a lot nearer to 23 cents. We as an association would have been in teleconferences with AIB and Bank of Ireland, lobbying that flexibility needs to be put in place with financial commitments uh, in the months ahead, given where milk price is going. Um, obviously, the beef sector, you know, we're in turmoil. It's, it's only a rollover from 2019, um, albeit COVID-19. There are huge challenges out there. The price of cattle at a 10-year low. We've seen that reflected in store and calf sales in recent times. So, you know, th there will be a lot of pressure, Sylvester. It's fair to say that it may not be fully on farms yet, but it, it's coming. And, uh, you know, the liabilities or the various different com financial commitments that have to be met on a farm on an annual basis, whether it's the second lot of grass or the, the tax for last year or, or whatever the case may be, on a, maybe a payment on a machine, a very, very necessary machine, uh, they will all have to be dealt with in the coming months. And what I would say to the farm families out there is don't stay in financial, financial isolation. Talk to your institution uh, early or indeed contact us through John Feely House and, and we will liaise because, you know, the financial institutions, it's in their interest that farm families stay afloat uh, in order for them to do the business into the future.